Please welcome back Andy Timona. Just give us about like two minutes or something like that to, oh, the chairs are there, oh but to get uh, everything you ready, your, uh, to, you have your mic. You will have your I mic in about two seconds. I need my surveillance camera also, please. And the surveillance camera. Ooh. And Andy will introduce our special guest or two. Yes. <laughs> Tell them a story. Uh, I'll tell them a story. Oh, what this can I Utah. say? Let's this is Utah them. Jensen. Yeah, this is Utah. <laughs> I am from Mama. Soul sister. I just uh, can oh tell the story about Dick, which is now happily residing in our uh, Mama archive. We are hoping that we can talk Andy into maybe getting her next film. This maybe. this film maybe. Wow. No? We'll we'll talk. I almost uh, fell off my chair when they told me they wanted to buy Dig. I, I remember sitting there and <laughs> <laughs> I, almost, I had won the grand jury prize from Sundance and it was an incredible honor in 2004, but when, when you and Larry said, we would like to buy Dig for the permanent collection, I just fell off my chair. Well, yeah. so now we'll give you a chair so I guess yeah. and yeah. you might be able to fall down. <laughs> so, so where's the money? Do you want to introduce? I'd like to call up uh, Josh Harris yeah. right now, please. Thank you. Now, do we have the mics for people to, oh, there's somebody there with a microphone, and... We have one more here. We have Two one more, more here. here. Well, we can do this, too. We don't have to, Okay. <laughs> Tell them partway through the other theater is going to come in, not be startled. Oh, yeah, partway through, the few people from the Titus Two are going to be wandering in here, possibly, so don't be alarmed. But make sure... It's not the feds. When you have an empty seat next to you, because... Oh, there's some down here. There's one down there. Okay. Um, so should we start a question and then everybody else can uh, chime in? Okay. So Josh, yeah. I, I presume you've seen yes. the film before. I have not. Oh, you have not? No. Ah. I have not. Well, instead of telling us what you think of the film, tell us what you think of Andy uh, making the film about you. Um, I think I got very lucky. I think I've got very lucky. Um, I, the genesis of how I found her is uh, we took over uh, Mark Kostabi's space at 600 Broadway, and we had empty space, and one of her friends wanted to do a party. came out great. Um, we decided to do Quiet, and I called her up, and she said, I have this uh, wonderful documentary filmmaker, Andy Timoner. I called her up, and basically, uh, you know, the rest is the, what you just saw on the screen. But does that mean you actually hired her to document the art project, or? Yeah, I mean that. Well, as as uh, if, if Sloss is in here, I guess Sloss as Sloss John Sloss, the the uh, fabulous uh, film from guy from Synetic. I have no idea what the company actually does, but yeah, uh, he said uh, sort of we uh, we got digitally pregnant. <laughs> got you. <laughs> My digital wife, so to speak. No, you know. How did you thank you? How did you escape prosecution for firearms that when the police raided quiet? Um, well, the, what I, from what I gather, that it's not in the movie. Um, I'd been I'd been in battle with Giuliani's social club task force for many many years because of pseudo, and I had a real good feel for them. And the um, at dusk, New Year's Eve. Uh, uh, a really fabulous uh, designer friend of ours, uh, an artist, Maya, we uh, built an installation at 353 Broadway. Uh, this was uh, during the stopless Billy era of New York City. She opened the gate up. Inside were scantily clad supermodels with red lights, and on the top it said, girls, 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 and neon signs, and then another neon sign that said, triple X. And I knew that they were going to keep 
New York City out of harm's way, and they couldn't get me New Year's Eve, but I knew that they would be arriving at first thing in the morning, which was per my want. And uh, so I decided to let Leo Koenig close the show, and you know, I slipped up to my loft. And uh, by the way, just I think it was a, you know, personally, I think it was, you know, my goal was to uh, create the greatest party in the history of New York. And if you're going to create the greatest party in the history of New York, you need to have the greatest after party. And the twist in the after party was that it was not for the pod residents, but it was in fact for the gentlemen that were keeping New York City out of harm's way, which in fact turned out to be the case, it's just not at that moment. I've got one for Andy, and that is um, having been in the pod and having studied the footage, you know, for probably weeks and years or however long you made the movie. If you look at the people in the pod from the beginning to the end, and 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 studying them, what do you what do you learn about human nature? Well, a, a, a big motivation in making the film when we did and feeling like it needed to happen and, and to come out at the beginning of this year was when I noticed in, on Facebook the status updates and I noticed um, people throwing their personal data online, um, it, may, it reminded me of the bunker. And it was at that moment in somewhere in 2006 that I realized that we needed to finish the film and that it was time, that technology and society had caught up to the film. And it sort of hit me like a lightning rod. I'd never had such a clear vision for a film before, um, which I think helped in getting through that massive amount of footage and time um, which really happened in, in 2008. So um, I think it was the, the fact that no matter how totalitarian certain aspects of the bunker were, no matter what people knew or didn't know about what they were getting into, the fact that they had to wear uniforms, the interrogations, all of this, it didn't matter. It was more important to be there. And it was more important to get the attention of the camera, if at all possible. And there were 110 of them, so it was a... It was like a candy store for anyone who, who wanted to feel that, to feel that they were part of something at the turn of the millennium, and Josh knew that. Um, what I didn't realize at the time was that this was what the internet would become. It would be a chance for 15 minutes of fame every day, um, and, that, and then it was, it was interesting because there was this other parallel of everything's free, you know, three meals a day, really good meals, um, wonderful performances up and down the 80-foot long table. Um, we all have great memories of the bunker, but there was, a, there was another side, which was that everything was owned, right? So it's anything we want is in the film. Um, Josh owned it all. And, um, and at that point, I didn't, I was a work for hire at that point. I'm now uh, part of the scam. But um, <laughs> I'm a partner in crime now. But, um, but no, and then the internet's the same thing. So it was just interesting to me in human nature, I think that it's just important to be conscious of what we're after when we're posting our photo. Um, I think we all have a, a desire not to feel alone and to feel connected, and that's a basic desire. But in our society, celebrity uh, sort of has become the, the golden lamb of like, okay, well, if I can get that, I won't feel alone and uh, I'll always feel loved, so. You can be exploited these days that way. How? Oh, over here? Where is all the pseudo footage? In, uh, do we see a sequel in, in hand uh, with uh, all the materials from pseudo? Well, a lot of you are from pseudo. I've got a terrible problem right now. Um, I have storage law. I'm, first of all, it's true, I'm out of dough. Um, We'll get to. We'll, I, I, I'll remedy that soon enough. I'm I'm doing the Wired City, um, which will make money and blah blah blah. I have a terrible problem. I have thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of your I, what I hoovered up culture. Or we all hoovered up culture. I just maybe was the ringleader of New York City before the turn, before it changed. And it's sitting in a locker, and in, it, I have two things happening. First of all, I've got a clock ticking because it's a physical medium, and that physical medium needs to be transposed. And secondly, I, I have had a terrible psychic weight because I'm holding very important memories for the people that made that material. 
and I, ha I have no professional way to, you know, manifest it. So I, it's, I don't know what I'll do. I, I you know, whatever, the, whatever is rational and logical. He's asking for ideas after this. Yeah. Well. Mm. There's somebody down there. But in the meantime, would you take any of this, this footage and, that you have and, and, and stream it and actually do something on the web? Well, a lot of the, um, um, and everybody here who, ha who I mean, uh, you know, we, poetry, hip hop, electronica music, film, any type of culture, we, we, we went for it. The problem is, is um, I can't just give it to somebody without, you know, some sort of structure because I'm responsible for it. And just, Getting, you know, where do I start? It's not what I want to be doing, and where do I start? And the cost of doing, of, of getting that material to a digital format is in seven figures somewhere. Yeah, that's exactly what I, exactly. You may notice there's pseudo shirts on certain people in this room, and pseudo's actually, uh, Ed Salzano from pseudo, who bought pseudo from Josh, is actually um, helping us webcast this tonight. So thank you, Ed. Thank you, Ed. Um, given your knack for having a, a premonition or a knack for knowing the future and what, what's, what it holds, I'm curious if you have any, anything going on in your head right now about what's coming up. Yeah, I mean, all I think about, I literally all day long, every day, all I think about right now is building the Wired City. And my, I, my plan is very simple. Um, I'll, the, whatever the Wired City is in, you know, in the next two years, uh, I'm planning to do it you know, commercially for the entertainment world in Los Angeles. And subsequent to that, uh, the reason I'm doing it that way is because um, I'm going to let Hollywood, uh, you know, help me figure out all these processes that I've got to develop. Like, I know what to do, but I don't know. I, until I'm doing it, I can't develop the processes. And then, of course, my dream is to take it to um, London and then eventually to the Pompidou Center and literally take over the Pompidou Center for a year and do what you know. Do what sort of the, put together all the elements that you're seeing there, but you know, on a more scientific basis. You know, I, I'm a sign. I'm as I'm you know as I'm getting to this point, I feel like a scientist, some or, you know mad scientist, art guy. I don't know. I'm not <laughs> sure. But you know, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, let's. Oh, there's somebody there. This is the first time we're doing it, so it's sort of a little slower process. If you think you have a question, you can kind of raise your hand. The other person is finished so that people with the mics can find you. You can do that as well. Hi. So I watch a lot of reality television, and I wanted to ask, um, to what extent did you think people you knew before um, going into the pod when you did Quiet or even yourself or your then-girlfriend kind of created um, personas for the camera? Do you think that people changed when they were exposing themselves? Or What's the Heidenberg principle or whatever? Um, um, the question is, what is you know, do peop, does the camera change people? Well, first of all, um, the people that you're seeing in the film, particularly in the Capsule Hotel, were no accident. I've been working, you know, uh, by the way, Jeff Gompertz, who did, did the Capsule Hotel, um, Alfredo Martinez, uh, uh, Alex Arcadia, uh, were guys I brought in. Leo Koenig brought in, uh, and at all for as, as fine artists. They're, they were all great fine artists, and they were no accident. I've been working with those guys for years. Um, the people, the the talent that came in. Um, Owen, be Owen Bush if you're out there. So Owen's here. I know it'll kill me if I. And Gabriella, what? I, okay, I, everybody. I'm Noam Galinsky and whatever. But uh, um, um, those were not. A lot of those people were not civilians. So they, they were particularly, um, you know, they, they were attuned to what was going on. And then when, when the civilians started showing up, they, I think they just vibed in. And incidentally, re when I watch reality television right now, it's, rea it's television. The, the, the net reality is the mind blow. Because what we live in public, you know, I found the magic in the medium that's pulling all the magic out of all the other mediums when I did We Live in Public and Operator 11. And all that really is that what happened was is we produced the camera, we turned the camera in on people's homes, and then we produced it as entertainment. And it's got it's there's this weird phenomenon. I guess I presume Andy had some element of that in the film. That at first it's great, you know, you, it's like this magical thing, like television was, and I guess presume radio was when it first came out. 
And then, and I'm going to produce that for a couple of years in, in Hollywood, and I'm and I'm go with it while it's glowing. And then it's going to. If you think television is nasty, this is really nasty, really, really nasty. And and what the whole idea, with, just to cut to the chase, the whole idea of going to the Pompidou Center for me is is really I'm going to build the the chicken factory for humans. You know, the you know again. Every, you know, everybody in this room is thinking, well, I'll, you know, I'm going to be the, the free-range chicken, but m most of you eat Purdue, <laughs> you know, and that's, that's the idea behind the Pompidou Center, just to let you know where that, the reality, the net reality is, is going to, people will be, change who they are and how they behave with the camera on, but they will be changed by the other people, that the, the dynamic of communicating with the other people and the, 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 human, the human individual as we know it, as I see it, the human individual as we know it is going to be, is in the midst of an evolutionary process and some sort of hive principle is about to, you know, be upon us. And at least, at least for the foreseeable future, the next 20 years before we can, maybe we get a handle on it. It's a race between us getting a handle on it and the computers taking over somewhere in there. A long answer to a short question. Over here? Can you hear me? Oh, I can't even see you. Yeah, wherever you are. Am I on? Yes. yes. Hello. Hi, Josh. It's English James. Uh, uh, James. How are you doing? James, uh, James was the guy in the shower, but James also ran, I don't think it made the cut, James ran the uh, chess tournament. We, we uh, had, was it 6,000 bucks for the, uh, we brought in. 5,000. 5,000. Well, it was 6,000 that I paid you. But um, the uh, <laughs> no, I'm, in twenties, yeah, at least twenty. I don't know. Um, yeah, and, and you did the uh, you had the the greatest chess players uh, that uh, we could we could gather up and you know from the world. It's uh, it got written up by the chess chess. I don't know if you saw it. It's in the chess like the papers wrote it up in the chess columns. Chess Weekly. Huh? No, I know it's not in the film. I'm just giving people the backstory. James James did the chess scene. Yeah. So what's your question, James? I haven't got a question. I'm just saying uh. I've just flown in from London, and I'm sorry it's taken me a few days to get here, and I could kick myself for being two hours late. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this film that's all over the world, and I help make, and I think I'm in it uh, at one point. Um, but mostly to congratulate you, Josh, and Andy, and everyone else. Um, and I'm really looking forward to you coming to London, and I w you know you'll be welcome with open arms. That's it. Uh, great, great. Thank you. Thank you. We will be coming to London, London Film Festival. Um, I have a question for for, okay, yeah, sorry. for both uh, Mr. Harris and uh, Ms. Timonor. Um, you know, both your work seems kind of like about exploitation and the predicting of greater and greater exploitation. But how do you? I mean. Josh in terms of your work, but also Ms. Timoner in terms of your profile on Josh, how do you kind of wrestle with the issue of exploitation, you know, with Josh as your subject and other things like that? Is being about exploitation, does that sort of allow you to have free reign? Or? It helps, it helps um, when you have a documentary subject that exploited many, many people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, but wait a minute. But, Look, but all these people were, were willing subjects. Yes, Let's and face everyone, it. Yeah. everyone checked in. And, you know, it, for me, actually, the study and the impetus to finish the film was more about the people. Um, and, and people say, Andy, why are you always making these films that you seem to attract these megalomaniacs? <laughs> it's not about, I mean, Josh is, a, you know, actually a really, a, if you can have a drink with him tonight at our party, have a drink with him. He's a great guy uh, to hang out with. He's not, you know, he's, I, don't, I don't mean it like that, but just, you know, it comes out like, okay, this guy wants to, con when I was filming the bunker, I thought, this man really wants to control these people in some way. What is going on here? Because he didn't tell me anything. He just said, do you want to come document cultural history? And I said, well, what do you have in mind? He said, I can't tell you that, but you'll have to uh, come check it out. And I was shooting a, a series for VH1 at the time anyway and was in New York, so I went down and, I saw as they were moving the first metal into the bunker and Jeff Gompertz was setting up his incredible capsule hotel. I was in, obviously. But, um, uh, you know, for me, he was the first subject who ever said to me, I don't care what 
you know, what I come out like in the film as long as you make a great film. And um, that it took him years to evolve to that. At one point, he stole the masters. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> that happened. I, li I like right to refer to it as artistic friction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right around, he didn't like the way he looked, you know. He, um, so he said, but he was actually losing all his money in the internet, but we didn't know that. I didn't know that at the time. But, um, but anyway, we came to this. It was actually meant to be because we, you know, really the film, if it had been just about the bunker, which is what we were going to complete, it would have been an interesting look at this revelatory thing that happened in New York that many people didn't know about, but it wouldn't have had this pertinence into all of our lives. And I feel like the, that Josh as a visionary is also sort of a walking cautionary tale and that he did that to himself. He actually took it too far. You know, he was the puppet master in the bunker, but when he put himself on camera, it takes guts, you know? He did that. He did that because he thought, this is where we're all going, and I'm gonna be the first. And I think Josh cares about being the first, and Josh cares about being recognized. Josh is a product of having watched TV for his you know, early years, and many of our children are. So I feel like what was more important was to be honest in the telling of this than to protect anyone involved, because everyone knew what they were getting involved in. Josh was filming himself, everybody else was entering the bunker, and it was um, my job, I felt like, and the job of my team at Interloper to try to really show everyone what, what is happening today, and, and, and just make us all conscious. What Over. kind of work do you do there? Um, I'm Interesting. Well, it's, I'm just setting up. It, it's a long form piece, you know, sort of. I did New York. Um, I'd like to do a, the Horn of Africa, but, and that's a long form piece. LA, LA is, I, if I can do LA, I've got a window of opportunity, and it feels right. Um, you can kind of tell. LA knows when you're right. They know, and it seems like it, it, it's working, and I don't know. I, we'll see. I'm, it's, I'm, believe me, I'm more curious than you are. I've actually been. I've been privy to a few meetings about the Wired City, and, and there are real possibilities. Um, Josh hasn't seen the film, but other people there have, and they want that there's interest in financing his Wired City, but he does write me periodically to say that he's homesick and splitting. So whenever there's not momentum, he's ready to run back and join his monkeys and, um, yeah. right? The, my, yeah, my crew. And, yeah. and it's funny because we've played out you know, a few festivals, and, and sometimes audience members ask, um, whether or not we think that maybe Josh is ahead of the trend and that there's gonna be a backlash against all these Blackberries and iPhones and just never being able to be offline and people are going to go, he should maybe start a tourist board in Owasa. Well, it, well He's ahead of the but, by the way, perhaps, just, just you know? as a friendly uh, advice, I mean, it's not, you go there to live, it's great, but it's very dangerous and um, uh, uh, it's not a good tourist place, just so no one here comes after me, yeah. But it's I'm having it's 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 amazing. I enjoyed it the two times I tried to track him down there. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um, it's always good to see you, Josh. Hi, Nico. And I bring a small introduction. Uh, I'm Nico Haupt. I was one of these German nutcases. <laughs> I think I uh, did pretty much authentic. I was authentic. I think in just one moment in the integration room, I thought I'd bring an act. So I love this time, but my question goes uh, to the director or whoever wants to answer from the audience. Ten years passed, uh, and still I hope this movie will pick up people that we still have reality fakery. Uh, I don't know if people know what happens with me after that. 9-11 changed also, even more radically, my artistic point of life. Uh, I did media hardcore activism. Uh, I was uh, pretty much up the front to prove that Nine was a false flag. I created the Nine Truth movement. I spoke out against them first when I, when I figured out that they turned to an own cult controlled by Orwellianists, fascists, ex-intelligence people, people linked to actually did 9-11. And they stole all my work, fabric, uh, fabricated, ridiculed me, insulted me and made me homeless. Meanwhile, I'm happy in the home again but I'm still not giving up uh, to get an answer from the audience of this movie. Because this audience here is my last hope. Plus maybe 4,000 intelligent people I know worldwide who know them well, that they also fabricated reality on 9-11. We can prove logically, physically, and technically that no planes hit the Twin Towers, whatever you guys think. So the I question... I take it for serious. 
And I want everyone to watch September Clues. <laughs> you you, and need, this is you, fascism need, you here. need to ask a question. So George Harris was right. <laughs> Truth gets always censored. Okay, thank you. And you guys all sucked into the reality and I love all Josh. Right. Watch also Static Agenda. Thank you. So over there, I think. Hi. My turn? Hi. Yes. Hi, guys. Back here. Josh, Andy. Hey, guys. Uh, okay. Thank you. Hello. Yes. You're on. Okay. Hi. Hold Hi. on one second. Hi. The woman, the woman who's standing up there. Actually, there's somebody behind you with a okay. mic. So first, that person in the back that um, that uh, Adam is pointing to, and then the woman in the green. I think. Okay. Okay. Hi guys. First, I'd like to start off saying congratulations to you, Andy, you, Josh, and to Kira, the producer, for winning the grand jury at Sundance. That's quite impressive. Very impressive. <laughs> this. I came here tonight not knowing about the film, and the array of feelings it provoked is amazing. Josh, my question to you is two-part. One, did you follow up at all with the people that were in the pod afterwards? And second question is, did you reach out to your family? Have you reconnected? I have not reconnected with my family. Um, she was a fake girlfriend, I have proof. Fake money, fake company, fake friends, with a few exceptions of everyone here. Um, that was, it's, it's you know, I, 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 was, I was going for the, the rub between reality and virtual. And um, the artists that I work with are the people that I love. Okay, and yes. It's his, his brother showed up at Sundance, but it was sort of like the two of them, it didn't, see, it seemed like he was meeting an old friend that he didn't know very well. Um, and they didn't seem to connect very much, is my observation, to answer your question. Hi. Um, first of all, thank you, Josh, for a great party. <laughs> I was there, and it really was amazing. And thank you, Andy, for capturing that experience so beautifully. Um, and... <laughs> And my question for Andy is, what's your next project? Well, I've optioned the, the rights to, um, to tell the story of Robert Maplethorpe. And um, I'm working with, uh, I'm producing the film with Eliza Dushku, um, who I think is in the house tonight. Eliza, are you here? Did you make it over from theater too? What's up? So we're, we're doing that, and uh, we're very, very excited about that. Um, it's a, a scripted narrative film. And uh, it's a story that really needs to be told. So I'm very excited to be doing that. I'm also sort of continuing. I will. I will. It, Josh is the first subject for with whom I I would gladly film a sequel. So if the Wired City takes off, I'll be right there. Hi. Uh, I just want to say, Andy, thank you for telling Josh's story and the many people in this room's story in the way that you did. Thanks. You really nailed it. And uh, I have a question you for, for you, Josh. Can you tell us a little bit about Lovey? Can you just maybe give a, just a little bit of context or some, some paragraph, some paraf something about, lo tell us about Lovey. What the hell is Lovey? <laughs> well, no. Um, well, Lovey is simply, uh, um, I think I did a, you know, what, what kind of drove me nuts from We Live in Public was um, I was deconstructing myself. And that virtual self that, would, that was consuming all of that media, and in my case, mostly television, I think I was able to successfully compartmentalize into Lovey. And that was why Lovey was sort of, that was the genesis of Lovey, and that's what you were seeing, I presume, in the, uh, at later and later in the film, Lovey was sort of manifesting. And Lovey is still, I mean, Lovey is a real entity. It's still within me. And uh, Lovey will appear when Lovey appears. It's, it's, there's a, you know, Sybil kind of deal, I guess. But I, I suggested that Lovey appear at Sundance. And uh, Josh said, no, Lovey's not ready yet. Um, but the other day, Josh called me and, and had an idea for Lovey's reappearance. So stay tuned to we live in public, the movie com. Actually, I should say, I, want to f I didn't want to forget to say this. If you send an email to Andy at we live in public, the movie com, you'll be on our mailing list and you'll know where the film is traveling. 
which will be news to you as it becomes news to us. We're figuring all that out right now. So if you send an email there. And, es and especially because uh, so many of you here are, you know, uh, part of the film and, and you know, the, the, I think maybe the, 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 if I, you know, did anything really well and um, the genius of it all was I, I somehow learned to herd cats. I mean, you, you know, and, you know, all you artists out there know who you are. Hi, I have a question, or rather a statement. Since a lot of the pseudo people are here, can you just mention um, Judge Cal? That's Jess Zeno. Yes. Thank you, Jess. Um, so we, we put that um, this film is dedicated to the memory of Judge Cal, who's in the film. Um, he passed away this past summer. And um, he was just, abs when I last filmed him, I think it was 2006, late in 2006, and he was a vision of health. He was an incredible uh, contributor to the project that I did, and I know for, for how long was he your collaborator? I mean, I called to ask him his titles, and he what should I call you in the film? And he had, you know, every, he was part of everything Josh did. From the yeah, and I think, he, I think just before he passed, he sent you material. Yes, um, I, was, I don't know if I was gonna talk about that, but okay. Hi. <laughs> no, yeah, and yes. he worked, I, he, I, I he, worked with Cal through 2001, through We Live in Public. He was, um, I was shocked because he, he called, well, I called him to ask him what he would like to be called in the film, and um, what role did he play in Pseudo, and what role did he play in Jupiter, and what, you know, what would he like to be called, and, and he asked for his name to be as it was on the screen, and he wanted his certain titles, and he said, I have some footage, and I said, oh, that's great, send it my way. And then he actually checked in with me and said, did you get the footage? And I said, no, I didn't. Um, and he said, I don't know what happened. I'll send it again. So he sent it again, then he called, said, did you get the footage? And I said, yes, I did. Thank you so much, it's a great contribution. And then he was found dead. Uh, yeah, and let me just say, um, Cal was uh, really in integral and important and a wonderful artist. And in my opinion, um, he, he, it was, there was some timing involved. Just, it's just my personal opinion, and he wanted to make sure she got the material before he went. But I, it's a debatable point. Anyway, um, Cal. Gentleman back there, yeah. Hello, hello. Josh, hi. Uh, I'm the cereal man uh, from... Cereal <laughs> bar Jimmy Meenan. <laughs> They're all coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Three words I want to say to this fine man up there. Thank you, Josh. You're welcome, Jimmy. Well, thank you in reverse. Jimmy and I, uh, Jimmy and I were actually, uh, you, there's an argument that we were homeless together for a long time. Back in, back, 353, we had the place, and uh, there were a lot of us kind of squatting in there. I don't know. My dime, but still. Unfortunately, we have time for just one more question. If uh, Wired City is the present, what do you see as the future, Josh? Like I say, I'm, I'm going to build the, uh, the chicken factory for humans. We're screwed as, as we know ourselves. It's just an evolutionary process. You know, the dinosaurs evolved out. We're going to evolve out. I, don't, I, I, don't see, I see that it is as an unstoppable force, you know, that, that there's only one way that it could be stopped, and that's the destruction of the world. Um, it, to end on well, I, but I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's bad that we evolve. <laughs> I'm just telling you that's the only way that I, because it's just the march of technology is unstoppable. It does appear that way. I mean, the, the fact that this film spanned 10 years, that seems like a long time in terms of a film, but in history it's very short, and it looks like we're looking at ancient history before broadband. Um, it's amazing how fast everything caught up to Josh's vision, and where it's heading from here is is probably going to be pretty remarkable in the next five or 10 years, but we can all remain conscious and meet each other for coffee, right? And have a physical life as w the virtual world takes over. Um, and, uh, and I think we'll always rejoice in, in meeting face to face. Beakless or, or beak. Beak or beakless, yeah. yeah. On that. Thank you very much. Thank you so thank much you. to you guys. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs>